How important is faith? Let me remind you again what the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Remember, if we are to be just, we must learn to live by faith. And friends, the people that lived in the Old Testament, how they were saved, how they were made righteous is no different from how we are to live today. Remember, Hebrews 11 verse 4, the Bible says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Even the first children of Adam and Eve had to live by faith. It was no different from how we are to live today. Yet Hebrews 11 continues on. In verse 5, the Bible says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. How? In verse 6, the Bible says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Friends, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to be righteous. Without faith, it is impossible to be saved. How important then faith is. But how do we live by faith? How do we exercise our faith today that we might please God, that we might be righteous, that we might be saved? How? Hebrews 11 verse 7 continues and gives us a very clear example how to live by faith. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Here is the example, famous man in the Bible, and even throughout the world today, his name was Noah. One day, God came to Noah and he said, Noah, the world has gotten so wicked, I'm going to destroy the world by a flood. Can you imagine this? Noah, he looks at God and says, God, what's a flood? Well, you see, Noah, I'm going to cover the whole world with water. How, God? How are you going to do it? Well, I'm going to cause it to rain upon the earth. And Noah looks at God and he asks God, God, what's rain? You see, friends, up to this point in time, rain had never fallen on the earth before. Did you know that? You see, in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 5 and 6, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field grew before it. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. At the very beginning, the way the Lord watered the earth was through a mist. It came from beneath, not from above. It had never rained upon the earth up to that point in time when God told Noah. It was new. It was something Noah had never seen before. And you know what? Because God said it, he simply believed it. God didn't make it to thunder out rain off in the distance there just to prove that he was right and that it was going to really happen. Not a single drop of water fell from the heaven to move Noah to go and build the boat. No. Noah simply took God at his word, and as a result, he went forward and built the big ark to the saving of his family. What an amazing faith. Or should I say simply, how simple his faith was. God said it, Noah 
believed it. And that was it. He trusted God that it was going to really happen. Friends, how can we have that sort of faith today? How can we have that sort of trust today? That trust that Abel had, that Enoch had, and even that Noah had in God and God's word. How can we take his word and simply his word only? You see, friends, in the human world, trust is built upon a relationship. Trust, it takes time. You cannot trust somebody that you do not know. In John chapter 17 and verse 3, the Bible says that eternal life is simply built upon these two things, knowing God the Father and knowing Jesus Christ whom He has sent. You see, eternal life is built upon knowing God. And you cannot trust somebody you do not know. This is not just any head knowledge. This is not just a little of what you've heard about God and the Bible out there. No, friends. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says that Adam knew Eve, his wife, and as a result, they conceived a son. This is not just head knowledge, surface knowledge. This is a deep and abiding and intimate trust and relationship. Friends, if we are to learn to exercise faith like Noah, we have to learn to walk with Jesus. We got to have this intimate relationship with Him, just like how Enoch walked with God. And they were so close, they were so intimate with each other that God says, you know what? I can't bear for you to die. I'm just going to bring you to heaven. Friends, how can we have that sort of relationship? We got to spend time in His Word. We got to spend time in the Bible. And if we are to build it, if we are to dig deep, we got to start there. One chapter a day. Just one chapter. That's all I'm challenging you to each day. It doesn't even take five minutes. You have to begin somewhere. And I'm challenging you today. One chapter of the Bible. And as we begin to walk with Christ, as we begin to walk in His Word, we will develop that deep, intimate relationship and trust in His Word. Will you take up that challenge today?